Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Suku Holiday Collection for 2020. I purchased the Silk and Sparkle set off of Selfridges, and it contains uh, all the pieces that are part of this holiday collection, which is one uh, powder blush compact. It has six pans of blushes and highlights. It has two eyeshadow quads, and then it has two of their a comfort lip fluid fogs which is basically like this demi matte kind of liquid lipstick so this set came from selfridges all safe and sound here i'm just showing you my unboxing of it because it comes in this beautiful box it all comes in the selfridges like dust bag so it's just this cotton canvas bag with like a yellow drawstring it's really cool and then the set came in this suku silk and sparkle gift box so it's this like black box it has some like gold artwork on there it's very kind of abstract and then inside there was some gold colored uh, paper worms basically and then we have the blush palette the two quads and then the two lip products so what i wanted to do today was do two different looks for you since we have two different eye quads and then we have um, this blush compact with six products in there i think i can probably use most of them between two different looks and then we have two different liquid lip fogs to play around with so i figured why don't we go ahead and do two full looks but before that i just wanted to share with you some swatches and some thoughts and things so why don't we go ahead and and talk about this set so this is the silk and sparkle set and i believe the retail price on selfridges is 250 dollars but you can purchase any of these products individually on selfridges i'm not even sure if this set is still available uh, but we're going to go through each each individual product so you can see each one in action and see swatches etc so let's go ahead and start with the um, blush compact so it is this big one and this is the second one now that they've come out with they came out with one over the fall which i did like a suku a video on that and this one is actually quite different so here is a close-up of the palette and in this palette we have three blushes and then three highlights and in terms of swatching i just went up and down from left to right so here are the swatches and the first observation i made in comparison to the first blush compact the number 101 which is this guy right here and we'll do some comparison swatches in just a second when i purchased this 101 compact it was the first time i was experiencing um, like suku face color products i had never purchased any of their blushes or highlights so i was pleasantly surprised with how pigmented these blushes are and when I finger swatched this newer 102 blush compact, I feel like the blush swatches or they even feel a little bit harder in the pan and they are not quite as pigmented as the first blush compact, the 101. And I haven't put it on yet, but I do feel like it will probably be a better thing. I remember when I first used that other compact, it was almost like my blush look was too strong right off the bat. I kind of like to build up my blushes. But anyway, that was my first observation when I um, finger swatched this newer blush compact. So I did just want to mention that. This shade especially seemed to be very, very faint. And this highlight down here seemed to have a little bit of a grittier texture. So again, that's just off of finger swatching, but we're going to go ahead and apply it on the cheeks and see what happens. And quickly, what I want to do is just do some comparison swatches between the 101 palette and the 102 palette, which is the newer one for holiday. And so I've labeled everything here on the screen, but I'm just gonna show you that I started with the 101 palette and I went into this top right-hand corner shade, this mauve shade, and I compared it to the top right-hand corner shade of this 102 palette. And I think you could probably see in these comparison swatches, like how much more faint the swatches are from the 102 palette. Next up, I have this blush in the bottom left-hand corner of the 101, the older palette. And next to that, I swatched this upper left-hand corner from the newer blush compact. And again, I feel like the blush in the older palette is a bit more pigmented than the one in the newer palette. And finally, the last three swatches that I have are highlights. So from the old palette, I have this shade down here. This is the one that seemed the most similar to the highlights in the newer palette. And I compared it to first this highlight here in the bottom left-hand corner of the newer palette. And this one is much deeper than the older palette's highlighter. And then I swatched this one on the bottom right-hand corner of the newer palette. And this one just has a lot more of like a peachy tone to it. So I think it makes it just a hint deeper than the one in the older palette. 
So those are just some like quick first impressions thoughts of the new blush compact and some comparison swatches to the older one. So let's go ahead and move on to the eyeshadow quads. I did swatch both of these and I don't, I only have one other Suku quad and it is very, very dissimilar to these two. So I don't have any comparison swatches for these quads. So the first one that I swatched is this one and it's number 135. And I just went from left top to bottom, and then I moved over to the right. And then next I swatched number 136. And again, I started from the top left, moved down, and then moved over to the right, top to bottom. So again, just some first impressions thoughts. I thought the 135 quad is much brighter. It, there's a little bit more warmth to it. And the second quad, number 136, I thought was a little bit softer and also cooler in tone. So I really think that these two quads are very complementary, but very, very different and give you a very different feel, at least looking at them. Uh, we will definitely have to put them on the eyes to see for sure. But I really liked that they went with uh, warmer and brighter and cooler and more subtle. I think it's like a really nice variety in there. And the next we have the two Suku Comfort Lip Fluid Fogs. And first I have number 102 here and this one is like a little bit of a peachy kind of rosy tone and this i find to be pretty neutral and kind of like an everyday shade and then the 103 shade is much cooler in tone it's definitely much more of a mauve color and so i think these two colors are gonna end up being an excellent pair for the two eye quads. I feel like the 103 lip fog, the cooler mauve tone is gonna be great for the 136 quad, the one that was a little bit more subtle, a little bit cooler in tone. And the 102 lip fog is going to be great for the first quad that I showed you, number 135, where it's just a little bit brighter and a little bit warmer in tone. And this one being a little bit more neutral, I think is just going to play really well off of that quad. So like I mentioned, we're gonna be doing two different Looks. So we're going to be using the 135 quad with the 102 lip fog and we're going to be using some of the warmer brighter uh, shades here in this palette. So probably sticking with these two blushes and in terms of highlight we'll just have to figure out which one kind of just works with my skin tone. So let's go ahead and start actually with the blush palette. Currently I just have foundation, concealer, and a little bit of powder down. So I don't have any bronzer, highlight, or anything like that. And I think I'm gonna forego bronzer because I really want to demonstrate these blushes without kind of altering it in any way. So I think what I'm gonna do is use this blush down here because I think this one is the most unique to this blush compact. I thought that these two shades you know, the two that I actually compared to the first blush compact were kind of similar in tone. So this one is the most unique and I'm the most curious about this one. So I'm gonna start here. I've got my Refer number no. five brush. This is like their traditional cheek brush. And I'm gonna go right into this shade here. Ooh, ooh, this is giving me definite Suku vibes. Um, what I, I feel like I know them for is this kind of like soft watercolor kind of application to their makeup. And it just goes on, you know, flawlessly, almost like you're applying it and it's just blending itself automatically, but it just has this beautiful like watercolor effect where the edges are just really, really soft. All right, there is the blush applied. I wonder if I can apply a little bit of this just to like the apples of my cheek, just to see how that looks. Let me find the right brush here. I've got my Sonia G Cheek Pro brush and I'm just gonna pick up just a little bit of this. I don't want too much. And I'm just going to add that to the apples here. Oh yeah, I think that was a good call because I think actually mixing these two, it just kind of warmed up this whole area. Oh yeah, I don't feel like I see orange on my face at all. I feel like I just see a little bit more like heat kind of coming through. Awesome, let's go ahead and move on to highlight. I think this one is probably a little bit too deep in terms of wanting to put it on like the high points of my cheeks. I'm really curious about this one because this is the one that kind of looked a little bit peachy and I think that could be pretty. Uh, let's let's try this, let's put this one on. I think this one would work on my skin tone, but this looks a little bit more, you know, typical. Um, so I do wanna try this one, and this is the one that felt a little bit gritty when I finger swatched it. So I am very curious as to how it's gonna apply. So I'm gonna use my Sonia G Sculpt 2 brush and go into this highlight here. And just place that down. Ooh, that's really bright. That is not 
not deep at all <laughs> once you get it on the skin. Wow, that's beautiful. Ooh, ooh, I'm so glad I went for this one instead of this gold one. Although I feel like I'm gonna have to try the gold here. I really wanna see what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and take my Sonia G Smooth Buffer Brush and buff that all in there. I think I do see like a little bit of that grittiness there. I mean, this is, it's it's a very smooth, it's a very beautiful, highly reflective um, highlight compared to the other Suku highlights that I've tried, which are incredibly smooth. This one looks a little bit, it's not chunky. Chunky is not the right word. It just looks maybe a little bit thicker. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. It just looks a little bit thicker. So I actually think this is more reflective than the other ones. So I do think it's actually brighter and more metallic than some of the other Suku highlights that I've tried from the other blush compact. But I think the trade-off is that it looks a little bit thicker on the skin. Let's go ahead and try this gold one because this gold one didn't feel uh, like kind of chunky like this one. Go into this gold shade. Wow, that's super reflective too. Let me go ahead and buff that. I don't know if you guys can see that through the camera because I have such a strong light in front of me. They're both going to look very metallic and very reflective, very highlighty. But this one is definitely stronger than this one. But this one looks a little bit more wet and it's kind of like smooth and like glassy. And this one looks a little bit more powdery. And I'm sitting here really like analyzing <laughs> these highlights, but they both are very, very beautiful. And they both, wow, they both definitely do the job. If you're looking for like a really bright highlight, these will not disappoint. All right, I just did my eyebrows. So we are ready to move on to this quad. I'm terribly excited. <laughs> Terribly, terribly excited. So I think I'm going to use this purple shade up here, which is, it's like a matte, but it's it's more like a demi matte. It's very creamy, almost like a satin kind of finish shadow. So I'm going to use this kind of as like a transition shade. And I'm gonna use my Refer Number no. 7 uh, blending brush and go into that beautiful like orchid shade and just kind of buff that into the outer corner of my eyes. I'm just grabbing a blender brush that's a little less fluffy. This is the Isam S33 brush. I want to kind of focus this where I want on the outer corner. Now I'm grabbing my Refer Number no. 1 brush. I'm going to go into this peach shade, which has definitely a little bit of shimmer to it. And I'm going to lay this all over my lid or the remainder of my lid and blend it into the orchid shade. This peachy orange shade is like really, really quite pigmented. The orchid shade was definitely a little bit softer than this one. Just going back to my original refer number no. seven brush and kind of dragging that across the top here, making sure it's all blended together, the purple and the orange. Wow, this is definitely a very unusual look for me, but what fun. Oh, I love this. Next, I'm gonna take my Chikahoto GSN nine brush and I'm gonna go into this light pink sparkly shade on top and see how this works as like a little bit of a topper here. I'm gonna put this um, basically on top of the purple here and then throw some onto the orange in the inner corner. I think this shade actually would work better on its own. It's not really a topper. It's like sparkly in the pan, so I thought maybe it would be, but it definitely has a lot more uh, pigment than just like a topper shade. And then finally, I'm gonna take this Bristles uh, Beauty Smudger Brush and I'm gonna go into this deep like eggplant shade here in the bottom right-hand corner and use this as liner. I'm gonna work it into like my lash line here. All right, so that's it for the eye look. I think this is a lot of fun and what a nice play on the holidays. I don't think this is a typical color combination for the holidays, at least that's not what I think of. And so I just think this is really, really festive without being very typical. It's very surprising. So uh, let me go ahead and put on some like mascara or whatever and then we'll move on to the lip fog. All right, so the lip fog that I thought would be a great pair for this quad is the 102. It's the first one that I swatched. 
So here is the 102, and if you guys missed my um, previous Suku video where I talked about like the fall pieces that I picked up, I did pick up one of these Fog uh, lip products, which was the first time I used them. And they're really, just, they're just really interesting because they go on almost like a gloss, but they're thicker, uh, they're a little bit more matte. And you can see once I get them on my lips that they kind of end up with this almost like a demi matte finish. They don't look completely flat or have that kind of like liquid lipstick, kind of like dry look to them. They have a skin-like kind of finish. And while they don't turn into like a full liquid lipstick where they're completely transfer proof, there is a little bit of resistance to transfer. And I did eat a meal uh, with one of these fogs on and it actually stayed on through the meal. I mean, I, I could probably have used a little bit of a touch up, but it just kind of faded. It wasn't like lipstick that kind of like wears away in the center of your lips and like, it just looks like you have this like outer rim of lipstick and you have to reapply or remove it all or something. This just kind of faded away really nicely. So it's just this very, very interesting formula. And I feel like I'm still getting to know it. I feel like it kind of, while it's setting down, can feel a little bit sticky, but once it's done, like it's not, it's not sticky at all. It's just, it's a very, very interesting formula. So anyway, that's the 102 on my lips. And here is the look using the 135 quad, the 102 lips, and then uh, the warmer kind of blushes in the blush compact. All right, so let me take all this off and then we'll move on to look number two. All right, guys, ready for look number two. So I'm gonna start again with the, uh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the blush palette and I used these two in look number one along with this highlight. So I think I'm gonna use this blush now. The quad is like a cooler toned quad. So I think this will actually be a really good uh, match for that. I've got a clean refer number five cheek brush. And again, I'm gonna go into the more mauve blush shade. And again, I just have foundation, concealer, and powder down. I don't have any bronzer or anything down. And I do find with this blush, I have to kind of wiggle my brush in there to be able to pick up any product. If I just tap in there like the other products, I don't pick up enough pigment. So this one is either of a different formula or it's a little bit um, harder packed. But actually, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a little bit of like hard pan forming oh there do you see that a little bit of hard pan is forming there so just something to be aware of um that's probably contributing to like the difficulty of picking up pigment not even difficulty but like it's a little bit harder than the other ones all right so there is the blush applied i'm just taking a look at the rest of this blush compact this is the only one i see that possible hard pan forming. I don't see it on the other blushes and I don't see it on the highlighters, which is great. I feel like usually when I get hard pan, it's on highlighters, but I don't see it on these three highlighters. Let's go ahead and move to highlighter, speaking of, and we use these two in the first look. I do think this one's going to be a little deep for me, but let's give it a shot. All right, so I've cleaned off my Sculpt 2 brush from Sonia G and I'm going to go ahead and use this highlighter and let's just tap some on here. Yeah, that's too deep. Can, do you see how you can kind of see that stripe right there? When you turn and you get like the reflection of it, of course, it always looks great. It looks like a highlight, but this is how I feel like I can always tell if a highlight's too deep for me is when I don't see the reflection, what that base color is. And it's definitely too deep for me. So I'm just gonna stop right there. So if you have a deeper skin tone than I do, I would say medium, medium to deep. This highlight would definitely work for your skin tone. So I'm just going to wipe off this brush, the Sculpt 2 brush, and I'm gonna go into this shade here and see if I can layer it on top and lighten it up a little. I still feel like you can see it. Let me go ahead and try my Sony G Smooth Buffer brush here. That is a little better, but I still feel like I see that dark stripe, especially out here. Okay, I think that is better, but I'm gonna do the same exact thing on this side just so we can match up. So I am gonna put down a little bit of this deeper highlight shade and then layer the lighter gold shade right on top. Yeah, I can see that deep highlight right over here. So let me buff again. Yeah, I think that looks, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. 
At least I don't think it looks as obvious as it did when I just put that deeper shade down. So that was this blush and then these two highlights layered one on top of the other. All right, I'm gonna do my eyebrows, but I'm gonna use my Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel this time because it is faster. And I have it in the shade Graphite, or is it Granite? It's Granite, sorry, color Granite. I think this tube is getting close to empty. All right, and now on to the eyeshadow. So this is the number 136 quad. And I am going to start with this shade up here. And I'm gonna lay that down all over my lid. So I'm gonna use a very fluffy blending brush. This is the Chikahoto F05 brush. And I'm gonna start on the inner corner and sweep outwards. All right, that color is kind of close to my skin tone. It is definitely a little pinkier, so I hope you guys can see like that light wash of color, but that went down nicely, blended out really beautifully. I'm gonna go in with this shade down here in the lower left-hand corner. So I've got my refer number one brush, and I'm gonna go into this really interesting shade down here. And I'm gonna start by applying to the outer corner here. I just wanna see how deep it shows up on my lid. Pretty deep, pretty deep, shows up pretty well. <laughs> and just building that up along my lash line. Kind of smoking it out a bit. Blending nicely into that first shade that I put down, which is great. I know pinkish red eyeshadow is not for everyone, but I, I really like it. I think it always looks really, I don't know, not funky, but like, kind of funky? At least like, maybe, maybe it's like a mature version of funky. I feel like I can, carry it off. Please don't tell me if you think I'm wrong in the comment section and burst my bubble. But I feel like I can carry it off and it's like a little bit of a funky look. And then I wanna put this really crystalline light pink shade uh, like on the inner corner of my eyes. So I'm going to grab like a flat shader to do that. I've got my Sonia G Worker Pro here. And just gonna focus that right in the inner corner just for like a little pop. Now I'm gonna grab my Sonia G Smudger One brush, right? Yeah, Smudger One brush, and I'm gonna go into this brown shade and basically do the same thing that I did with that deep dark eggplant shade in the first look. I just want to work this into the lash line. I've got my Esam G34 brush, the one I love to use to kind of finish up any blending of edges. So there is the final eye look. I really like it. I like this kind of like hot pink look. I know a lot of you are not into this, are not into like red pink eyeshadows, but I think it's a lot of fun. And again, I feel like this is very festive, just like the first look, but it's not necessarily like the first kind of like color story I would think of in terms of like holiday parties or whatever. I always think of like gold. I always think of greens. I always think of putting down like a black base or something. So this is a really nice change. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to lips. I'm just gonna go ahead and curl my lashes, throw on some mascara, and then we will move on to that second lip fog. All right, mascara is on. Let's go ahead and use number 103 of the Comfort Lip Fluid Fog. And this is the one that had the cooler, movier tone to it. All right, there you have it. You know, it's so funny. This eye quad compared to the other eye quad I thought was so cool in tone, but now that I have it on my eyes and now that I have such a cool lip down, it really doesn't look that cool anymore. It actually looks kind of warm compared to this uh, lip color, but I love this lip color. I really love lip colors that have like that little hint of gray in there, so cool. And I feel like this happens a lot. Like once I get my entire face on, I feel like sometimes my blush kind of gets lost. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a little bit more. And this blush is definitely, it's like a match for these lips. There we go, I feel like that's a little bit more balanced. All right, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really love these eyeshadow quads. I think the pigmentation, the blendability, all of those things are really, really gorgeous. I love the color stories of them. Like I mentioned uh, when I was putting them on, both of them I find to be really festive, but not very traditional in terms of like holiday looks or holiday makeup. They're so like 
pink and purple leaning, I feel like they would be great for the summertime traditionally, but I do think they're very festive looking and I like the idea of these different colors for the holidays. And they definitely performed really nicely. I've always heard of like the best things when it comes to Suku eyeshadows and these did not disappoint. I think I may need to indulge in a few more of these. These fog lipsticks, I had mentioned to you like how unique they are and how they're transfer, they're not transfer proof, but they're kind of transfer resistant. So they're kind of long wearing, but not in a liquid lipstick kind of way. And they're just really, really interesting. I've never used anything quite like this. They have a moussey texture, which I definitely have come across before, but the way they wear and the way they feel on the lips is definitely very unique. So those are the fogs. So the blush palettes, you know, I'm not really pleased at this like slightly hard pan situation. And I don't like how difficult this one was to pick up on the brush. I don't mind if a blush is a little bit less pigmented, so you have to build it up, but I don't like feeling like I can't actually get the product onto my brush. I, you know, there is a difference there between being able to pick up the product and the product having like less pigment. These two are just much more subtle than the blushes in the first uh, blush palette. And if I had to decide between the two, the, the two different blush palettes, I think for my skin tone, I prefer this first one. I like the blushes in here. They were definitely a little bit more pigmented. I do feel like I have to be careful with the application of these blushes, but I like the range of colors that I have in here and I like these two highlights. This palette I think is much better suited for deeper skin tones because we have this deeper highlight in here where you guys saw that that was uh, too deep for my skin tone. And then all of these blushes I think would show up very, very nicely on like a medium maybe medium deep skin tone, so long as you took the time to build it up. Because like I said, the pigmentation is a little bit softer than the first palette. So those are all of my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.